What's going on, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Royally Fucked. I am your boy, the Sebastian Alexander Bonin, but you can call me His Royal Highness. Hopefully, your day is going well. And I'm coming to you right now to talk to you about episode four of The Queen's Gambit. So, I am running through it. Pardon our presentation. I know I look a mess, but hey, it is Saturday. I'm in my spot. I am chilling, as you can see, and I am just... You know, watching stuff, as soon as I watch it, I'm coming to you guys and recording it so I can remember everything that transpired, and let's get into it. So this episode, there was a lot going on, a lot of traumatic events that happened for Harmon. Um, first and foremost, um, Mama begins to feel herself, you know, being an orphan, being in the orphanage, being adopted at... I guess a later stage, even though she was adopted, maybe I would probably gather around the ages of maybe eight to ten, somewhere in that in that age range, um, eight to ten, eight to twelve in that area. Uh, she kind of has always felt the place as if she just really didn't belong, right? And so now she's coming into her womanhood. Uh, she is in high school. She has some new sets of friends. Um, and while she was in night school, uh, this, you know, grungy 60s love, peace, and power, flower power kind of guy, uh, invited them back over to the apartment. Um, and being a person that has had very minimal interactions with, uh, people, and, and in the interaction that she had has not always been positive, um, i.e. the girls from school when they were bullying her and then the girls from school when they invited her over, she felt kind of out of place and just could not relate. Um, they invited her over after a Russian class or whatnot, right? High schooler, you know, and, and this, this begs the question to me, you know, she stayed over there for a couple of days, and her mom, Alma, allowed that to happen. And I can only imagine a couple of differences. Me, as a person of color, that would not have happened. In my mind, even during that age period, uh, even during that time period, um, I can only imagine that people of color did not allow their children to stay out for a number of days, right? Especially with someone they did not know. And even if they did know them, you're not going to just be out there for the, you know, Mom, I'm staying here for the entire weekend. I'll be home after school on Monday. That was not going to happen. So that was the first aspect of it, looking at the differences of uh, people of color versus Caucasian, right? Then the next thing is, is that this is an adopted child. That is a child that was adopted later, right? Later in life, right? And so I can only imagine that you want to, you know, you're going to do things that you normally would not do for that child, um, especially as a child that knows that they are adopted, right? Because Harmon knew she was in an orphanage. It would be different from a baby that did not know and you raised that baby and you reared that baby for, you know, your way of life, understanding how it is going to work in your household. But to take a transplant and have them come in, you know, and say, this is the rules of the house, it's, it could be, be very hard for the parent and very hard for um, the child because you may, the child may feel uh, unwelcome, unloved, may run away, may want to go back to the orphanage, all of these different things. And so sometimes I, I, I would guess that families uh, would um, be a little lax or a little lenient on certain things in order to make the child feel welcome, to make the child feel at home, to make the child feel safe, right? Um, but again, in my previous video, I got the question is almost kind of like, okay, you're letting her drink and she's in high school and she's also in high school. Granted, I'm assuming she was a senior because we see later on in the episode that Harmon graduates from high school. Um, but still, just being out for weekend for the weekend with boys. Um, and so she goes to call her mom at the apartment. Everybody's kind of smoking and drinking and whatnot. And she goes and lights the candle in the bathroom. And I love the dick candle. I would want several dick candles. I re if you know side if y'all know somebody that makes dick candles, let me know. Because I would love to have a dick candle. <laughs> I'm for real. I'm so serious. I would love to have a dick candle. Candles in my house. It was a dick candle with balls and all, right? Oh, if I knew how to make those, like if I had a molding to make, I would, man, I would make a killing off of making dick candles. But anyways, neither here nor there. Um, oh, I 
want to dick candle so bad. But anyways, uh, that, that got me caught on dicks. But anyway, so Harmon experiences. I'm assuming it is her first sexual experience because she's like, are you almost done? And that lets you know as a man that you're not doing what you need to have. I don't know. Maybe she just didn't know what to expect. But to say, are you almost done and just be lying there? It reminds me from that scene of Waiting to Exhale with, um, with uh, Robin. But, you know, he, he said sorry. I'm assuming that he was on that stuff or drunk too much. Because, yeah, if you drink too much, of course, the blood flows in another direction. It doesn't go to your dick. You can't get hard and you're just pumping air. Um, but... Uh, she has her first sexual experience, um, and it, I mean, it, I, ooh, excuse me, slide over because I'm not centered. It was what it was. Uh, then, you know, she graduates, her mom's like, are you planning on going to grad night? She's like, no, we have all this stuff going on, this, this, and this, in Mexico City or whatnot. Uh, she gets to Mexico City on the plane, um, her mom made a confession or whatnot that, uh, she had been had a pen pal corresponding with this man. I can't remember his name um, for years and years. You know, literally years and years. Because they were in like grade school when she met this young man. I thought it was going to be a catfish because she had a picture of him. And somebody that you ain't never met. I swore I don't know if they were catfishing back in the sixties because uh, this was in sixty six. Um, I don't know if they were catfishing back then, but I thought it was going to be a catfish, but it was not. It was the man that Mama spent all of her time with the man. She was giddy. Um, and I can only imagine how that felt. You know, you're in love with your husband and your husband leaves, like leaves you. And yeah, you go into it. We saw that she went into a depressional funk. Mama was on tranquilizers, mood stabilizers, and she was just trying to get through the day, trying to numb the pain. So it was great to see Alma having a smile on her face, having um, the time of her life in Mexico City with the man that she had never met and yada yada. And Harmon said it too, she, they're probably fucking, so she probably got some bomb Mexican dick, you know, uncut, circumcised dick while she was in Mexico City, um, but just having a great time. And then at, with that, um, Harmon played people, won the people. She met this, 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 uh, uh, I'm assuming he was Russian young boy. I think he was, had to be 13, because in the midst of the conversation, she asked him, um, what are you planning on doing with the rest of your life if you be a world champion at 16? And he didn't understand. Like, did not understand. Like, and he said, I don't understand. Like, what are you going to, if you become the best of the best at 16, there is no universe champ. You're not paying aliens and shit. So if you become the best at the best at 16, what is the rest of your life going to look like? And that gave me that he had blinders on. He had not even thought to what's going to happen after that. He is just trying to become world champion within the next three years at 16. And when she said, well, what are you going to do after that? She was literally trying to give him some some of the wisdom that her mom gave her um, earlier in this episode about learning to relax, learning to live in the here and now, learning to appreciate the things that are around you. Um, and when you relax, you play better, you feel better, yada, 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 right? Um, and so she was trying to literally impart that same information on him, and but he just could not get it. He kept saying, I do not understand. Uh, but what I, what Mama did earlier is kind of played her feminine wiles, her sexuality against the same young man because they played a game, the game went for five hours. And I'm gathering what I understand. When they take a break overnight, you have to write down what your next move is going to be. Seal it in an envelope and give it to the official. Uh, because, of course, you go back and you plan how you're going to do it. And so you have to continue with that next move that you're going to do the next day. So after they play for five hours, they take a break. On the way out, the little Russian boy was like, do you have, like, ultimately he was saying drive-ins. Like, when you watch movies in cars and he was like with... Uh, Elizabeth Taylor and Elvis Presley, he was like, I can dig it. Um, and I'm not sure if he was trying to flirt with Harmon or yada, 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 or, you know, just really asking the question or whatnot. But the next day, 
Mama kind of flirted, but not flirted. So instead of sitting down when it wasn't her turn, she was walking around. She was looking. She was twirling in her dress. Um, there was one point where I thought it was really unfair to where she was sitting on the ottoman or the sofa and Mama was tapping her foot rather aggressively on the tile and it had that clicking noise. And I'm like, is this, a, this can't, I mean, you're, you're causing a distraction. This can't be fair or whatnot. Uh, but anyway, the, the boy lost, he resigned. He said, for you, Beth Hartman, I, re I will resign the old fashioned way. And he laid the queen or king, whatever that was, down, he resigned. Um, and that's when they had that conversation on, well, what are you gonna do when it's all over? And he was like, you know, she said, you are the best player that I've ever played. And he was like, until you play Dormoff or whatever his name was. Um, she plays, I'm, and I'm just skimming through, I'm not giving you a whole thing. She plays Dormoff and loses. She loses, she resigns. Um, because some of the stuff was, she said in her spiel that it was very obvious, that she, it was so obvious that she did not see it. And she's given this whole, you know, as we see in, um, when her mother does not make it to the match, um, she gives this whole spiel, like play by play of what transpired. And so she loses, it was a very intense game with the, the head rushing or whatnot. Um, and she goes into the room and gives this meals to her mom. And she's spilling, getting undressed, sits on the bed, and she touches her mom's leg. And her mom didn't move. And I'm assuming that maybe the temperature was a little cold. I don't know how long it takes for blood to turn cold in the deceased body because your heart keeps it pumping, keeps your, your blood warm or whatnot. So when you decease, of course, you cool off, right? So I'm not sure how long it took, but her mom didn't move. And so she got up and put on the light because the room was dimly lit. And her mom was laying there eyes wide open. Um, which is, I don't know how you can die with, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I guess you can have a heart attack and die with your eyes open. Um, somebody told me, how can you die with your eyes? I mean, if you're asleep, you're sleeping, you just pat. Sinuses. You just kind of pass away in your sleep, but her mom's eyes were wide open, kind of hand on her chest and hand behind her head. And so her mom died in Mexico City. And I'm glad, I mean, I'm not glad that her mom died, but I'm glad if her mom had to die then, she had a great time before she passed. She had, she lived it up with her little pen pal or whatever, 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 before she left. Um... And so the doctor said it might be hepatitis, and we know that her mom was sick. You know, we've seen in episodes that her mom was coughing or whatnot. Um, and what irked me in this scene, the doctor left, and I guess the bellman, or he may have been the manager, had to probably be the manager now that I think about it, of the hotel is like, you know, anything that we can do to help you, yada, yada, yada. Um, um, of course, the, we'll take care of the bill, and we'll also take care of the substantial, and these are like substantial, alcohol bill and he went on to say I'm sure that it wasn't the numerous martinis that your mother had that played a cause in her death first off that why would you say that why, why would you say that that hurt the dog shit out of me because like she literally just lost her mother and you're talking about a bill and the numerous martinis mama had if you're gonna take care of the bill take care of the bill but Harmon was not done Harmon politely said, well, she did mention of the, 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 the lackluster quality of the tequila. And he looked and kind of swallowed like, oh, oh really? But you started it. You start, why would you mention that while this child is literally, she, she's in shock. Her mom has passed away. Uh, while the doctor was there, she asked for a tranquilizer. And he was like, sure, I'll give you a sedative. She was like, no, I don't want a sedative. I want my tranquilizer. I want whatever the name of it was. Uh, I have a prescription. And she was like, oh, in Mexico, you don't have to have a prescription for that. You can go down there and buy it from the pharmacy. There's one in the hotel. Mama goes down there and daddy brings back this little small peel cap, probably with about seven peels in there. He lays it on the counter and Harmon says, mas, which means more, right? In Spanish. So being that mama ain't got to have no prescription to get that, I could only assume that mama bought 
every peel in stuff, which I can only assume this is going to lead her to a further diminish because there there was a scene in the episode when Mr. Shibble was talking to her as a child, flashback, that she is the the double-sided coin. One side is all the talent and the other side is all the hurt. And it's only so long before one side outshadows the other. Uh, she has a lot of anger or whatnot. And so I, I'm interested to see with her having access to all of these tranquilizer pills and drinking now and smoking now, what is this going to, to do to her dimming her spotlight or you know, crashing and burning, being at the pinnacle of her career, being at the top of her career uh, in the realm that she's in, but having all of these vices that is going to sending her plummeting, you know, to a to a fiery death. Not necessarily a fiery death, but you get the analogy. So that is where we are with episode four. This episode, I forgot what it was called. This episode, uh oh, phone upside down. This episode was, oh, I had a missed call from who? Oh, my cousin. Um, what is this episode was called? Middle Game. I don't know what that stands for. I didn't hear a lot of talk about a middle game in this episode. Um, so that's really about it. Again, I am your boy, the Sebastian Alexander Bonet, and you can call me as Royal Highness. Again, thank you guys for the 10,000 subscribers that we have on our channel now. Make sure you follow and subscribe and share. And other than that, I will holler at you guys later on the next review or whatever else I'm going to be talking about. Holler at you later. Peace and so much love. Ciao.